Layering percussion samples can be a really easy and fun way to create new and surprising sounds. Today we're going to have some fun with Ableton's instrument racks and the sampler instrument. And we're going to end up with our own percussion layering device using just stock instruments. Okay, so I'm on a new live set and on a fresh MIDI track I'll bring in a sampler and then I'll go to my packs and I'm going to use the uh, samples from The Forge by Heck. So I'll go on to samples, drums, and I'm going to use six kicks. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll drag them onto there and then I can see them in the sample area here. Um, and now I'll, I'll use uh, four hi-hats. One, two, three, four. And I'll use six snares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I want to be able to play just one sample at its original pitch with one MIDI note. So to do that, I'll select all of these samples by clicking here and pressing Control A. And then I'll um, drag this left hand side all the way over to C1. I'll go to the end and um, drag the right hand side in to the left. And I'll drag it over to uh, E2. And then if I right click and press distribute ranges equally, I've got uh, basically one MIDI note uh, per sample, apart from this final one here, which I can just uh, move in like so. Now I'm really lazy, so I want to only press C1. And whenever I press a C1, I want to get a different sample. So I'll use a MIDI effect, the random MIDI effect. I'll take the chance to 100% and we've got 16 samples, so 16 choices. And then whenever I press a C1, I get a different sample. But notice I'm not getting C1 at all. So actually I'll just select all of these samples and drag them over by one. Now I want to be able to randomize lots of different parameters. So it would be really good if I could have random velocities as well as random pitches. So I'll drag on this velocity MIDI effect. And just so I can show you what's happening, I'll just use this MIDI display. I'll put one here and one here. So you can see I'm playing a C1 and I'm getting out a uh, D sharp two. And so my, my velocity here is 80 and my velocity there is 80. Now, if I clamp this to 64, so the out high and the out low are both 64, I've got 80 and 64. Now, if I turn the random all the way up to 64, there, are now, there should now be 127 different, different values, or even 128 different values for velocity. So I've got 80, 35, 80, 49, 58, 27. Yep, so it's covering the whole 128 range for velocities. Uh, and I've got 16 different choices for pitch. So what can I control with uh, velocity? Well, if I go on to this MIDI tab on the sampler and next to velocity, we've got these two lists. And uh, it'd be cool if I could um, manipulate the pitch of the sample and the, uh, the loop length. But let's first uh, change the loop mode. So I need this uh, sustain mode here and I'll link it and I'll turn the release mode off. Now, if I press a note, I've got the same pitch. I'll, uh, I'll turn this to, let's say, let's go all the way to 100. So the samples are being played at different pitches. 
And then if I turn the loop length amount down to say minus 70, we've got lots of different loop lengths as well, which uh, adds some quite cool effects. We can also very easily add some random panning to this. So if we go on the filter slash global area, we can then just take the pan random to 100%. Now, now you're hearing the samples covering the whole stereo field. I'm now going to group this sampler instrument and the MIDI effects into one instrument rack. So I'll click on this on the sampler, press Control A, and then Control G to group them. And uh, I don't need these MIDI displays, so I'll delete them. I now want this instrument rack to be part of another instrument rack. So I'll select it and press Control G again. And then if I go on the chain list here, I'll just rename that one. Now, eventually I'm gonna to want to have six of these instrument racks. So when I press one key, uh, six samples, six random samples will play. I'm not quite ready to duplicate this chain yet, but first I'll actually group this instrument rack into another instrument rack. And then I'll press the uh, chain list here. I'll rename that percussion. And then just in between these two instrument racks, I want to kind of split the MIDI to get a cluster of notes, a semitone apart. So I'll use the chord MIDI effect and I'll drag it there. And I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Basically, I want to uh, make sure that on the instrument rack, on this instrument rack, I'm always getting a C1. So I'll need to clamp all the pitches down to a C1. And I'll do that using the scale MIDI effect. Okay, and then I'll just clamp every, uh, every pitch to C1. And I'll just use another MIDI display. So I'm pressing C1. An F1 is coming out of this instrument rack via the chord and then it's being clamped back down to the C1. So I'm now ready to duplicate my six sampler chains. So I'll select this instrument rack uh, with the chain labeled one, and I'll press Control D to duplicate it, and I'll make si six different chains. I only want chain one to be activated by C1, pitch C1 and chain two to be activated by C sharp one, chain three to be activated by D one, four to be activated by D sharp one, etc. Uh, so I'll go onto the key zone editor. I'll select all and move this across to C one. And I'll move that to the left across to F one. And then I'll right click and press distribute ranges equally. So now uh, each chain will only be activated by one MIDI note. So I'll press a C1. And on chain one, we've got a C1, C1. On chain two, C sharp, and that's being clamped back down to C1. Chain three, D1, and it's going down to C1. So it's all working well. We're now going to add some different effects to the six different chains. Okay, so that's my six different chains. So here's how it sounds. So I'm getting lots of different, really aggressive 
kind of scary but cool sounds. Um, the one thing I want to change is I want to actually gate all these sounds so they end exactly when I want them to end. So to do that, I'm going to create another um, chain in this leftmost in instrument rack. So I'll right click, create chain, and I'll label this gator. And I'll bring in an operator. I'll take the release all the way to zero uh, to one, the lowest. And to make it sound really cool, I'm going to add a utility and mute it. Okay, and then on the end of this percussion chain, I'll add a gate. So comes to a dead end as soon as I take my finger off the key. So I'll use the side chain and I'll take the audio from Perk Layer. I'll scroll to the bottom of the list and go to Gator Pre-FX. So I'm going to press a note and you can see that I'm receiving the signal from the operator take the threshold down a bit, I'll take the floor to zero, look ahead to 10, attack to zero or to the lowest, hold to one and I'll leave the release there. So ah, I think the gate's in the wrong place so I'll just move that to here. Cool, so the sound is stopping very abruptly. And I can just change the release time to, um, to smooth out the end if I want. I hope you've got some cool results out of this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.